We now move over to, back to France and a paper on border disease from Dr. Marie-Anne Bethune um, from Toulouse. Okay, so thanks, Michael. Um, as you already told, um, said, uh, we're going to move from the United States and go back to Europe to go in France, uh, to go to France. Um, we are going to talk about the latest border disease news. Border disease is mainly a major disease of sheep caused by a pestivirus called BDV, which has some of the characteristic of BVD in cattle, but with a more pronounced emphasis on reproductive disease. Uh, before starting with, I'm just going to introduce myself briefly. My name is Marianne Bittun. I'm a French vet and I will present the project I was involved in, which took place the last year at the Vet School of Toulouse. And this project was about the, about the comparative effects of border disease virus genotypes on ovine fetal infection. So border disease is widely distributed and has been reported from several regions all around Europe. But more precisely in France, we have two uh, different situations concerning the disease. The first one um, occurs in Aveyron, here, which is a region in the southern France. And in this region, only sheep are concerned. Um, a first episode of the disease uh, occurred in 1983 and led to severe loss in adults and lambs. Recently, we had uh, an episodic from 2008 to 2014 and which resulted in high mobility and mortality in lambs. Uh, and this was characterized by weakness, respiratory disease, and the well-known hairy shaker syndrome. Um, it was at first in the fattening units and then to a less extent in the breeding units. We also had reproductive disorders such as abortion or infertility. The second situation takes place in the Pyrenees, where both sheep and isards, a small wild uh, remnant, are affected. But here the situation is enzootic and mainly leads to reproductive uh, issues with few non-mobility in lambs. So by isolation and partial sequencing, we found that Aveyron was uh, concerned by the closely related genotypes BDV3 and BDV6. Here, and uh, while only BDV4 was isolated in the Pyrenees. Thus, we wondered if those strain differences may partially explain uh, the differences of clinical context that we have uh, on the field between those two regions. So our objectives uh, was to compare the pathogenicity of four French BDV strains of different genotypes on in the adult, uh, on the transient infection in adults, but also on the persistent infection in lambs, especially. So we used two strains isolated um, in, from PI lambs in 2010 in Aveyron. One strain isolated in 2005 in the Pyrenees from a, a PI animal. And we also test, decided to test the reference strain known as the BDV5 Aveyronite, which was isolated during the first episode of the disease in 1983. So for this purpose, we used Lacon news that we previously tested to be free of pestivirus, and we split them into four groups of nine years each. We infected them at 52 days of pregnancy during the best period to create PI lambs. So we infected eight years on nine because the last one was a sentinel. We did that by IM injections with the same dose of virus for each strain. This dose was 5 ml, 2.10 to the 5 DICC 50 per U. And the experiment lasted 66 days in total. During the first period, uh, between the 0 to the 14 during the transient infection. We mainly realized hematology, clinical exams, and we did a virological evaluations. And then we are, were more focused on the potential abortions. We also did serological evaluations on adults. At the end of the 66, we uh, carried out necropsy and fetal assessment on the fetuses after euthanasia. So concerning the transient infection in adults, we didn't see any clinical signs. But we had, for all groups, um, a leukopenia between 
D2 and D7, as you can see here. Uh, and this was mainly due to lymphopenia, actually. And we didn't have uh, any significant differences between groups, despite the fact that uh, for BDV5 um, in, uh, in blue, and to a less extent, BDV3, um, we are a more extended leukopenia for, for, those, for those groups. The infection was confirmed in every sheep uh, with a quick seroconversion between the 14 and the 36 by using the NS2 free ELISA. And BDV was detected and quantified by real time PCR between uh, the 4 and the 14 here. The viremia was characterized by several things. At first, we had um, a short duration ranging from one to five days per U. We also had a, a, a variability between animals within the same groups. Uh, we had a, a moderate virus load, and eventually we had a, a higher frequency of detection and a longer duration for the BDV5 group compared to the other ones. So now concerning the fetal infection, the first thing that we observed was abortion um, in the BDV5 group at day 50 and day 54 after infection. And the fetuses were found were BDV positive, but negative by PCR for the other abortive pathogens. And the BDV virus isolated was found to be the same than the inoculum after sequencing. So at the end of the experiments, uh, we got between 12 to 20 fetuses uh, from each group, and we assessed them for their morphologies, abnormalities, antibody, and BDV status. So concerning the, the fetuses, we first observed that every strain infected them with the same efficacy. Indeed, BDV, we detected BDV by PCR um, in each fetus for at least one sample. So here you can see different tissue, brain, thymus, and spleen, which have been tested. And we saw dif differences between those tissues. For example, thymus and brain, in blue and red here, were more often positive than the, the spleen, for instance. But we didn't see significant uh, differences between groups for the same tissue. Just despite the fact BDV3 and to a less extent BDV4 and 6 were less frequently detected than BDV5. So now if you have a look at the quanti quantitative sorry, results of fetal infection, we showed that BDV was detected with high mean virus loads, uh, ranging from 3.4 to 5.8 log 10, according to the tissue and to the group. We find the highest RNA quantities in the brain, here in blue. But we only find one significant difference between BDV4 and BDV5 concerning the thymus. So despite similar replication of BDV genotypes in the fetuses, we observed wide differences in terms of dead or malformed fetuses that we found at necropsy. For instance, BDV5 and BDV4 here seem to be more pathogens than the other genotypes. And if we define the criteria more precisely between mortality and uh, malformations, we actually realized that at the 66, we got, for instance, 62.5% of dead fetuses for the BDV5 group, whereas we only, we, sorry, we had um, for the BDV5 groups only malformed fetuses. But surprisingly, we didn't have uh, any malformation or mortality for fetuses in the BDV3 group and only congenital malformations uh, in two twins in the BDV6 group. We confirmed this data by studying parameters of fetal growth. And for instance, uh, in these two graphs, you can see that uh, we got significant differences in terms of weight and bone length. We measured radius and tibia uh, compared to the other groups. And after morphometric evaluations, uh, we mm, those differences, actually, we allocated them to the premature mortality, uh, which occurred several days before euthanasia for the BDF, in the BDV5 group. So as a conclusion, we showed that all the BDV genotypes present in France and that we tested in the study, they showed the same capacity to infect the fetus. But not the less, the fetal variance was not the same according to the strain and the genotype. For instance, BDV5 
mainly induced death and abortions, while BDV4 and to a less extent BDV6 induce malformations. Eventually, BDV3 and BDV6 as well only induced PILMs without malformation or poor teratogenicity. And the fact that BDV3 and 6 only induce few abortions or malformations uh, was confirmed by field data uh, given by the French uh, Breeding Sanitary Association. So far, those differences could be due uh, to a different inflammatory fetal response caused by the strains uh, itself or a different tropism of the virus. And the next perspective of this work would be to study the fetal response more precisely by taking a neotic sample, for instance. We are also fully sequencing and comparing the genome of each strain used in this study. And in addition, this model will be used this year to test the BDV vaccine efficacy against BDV fetal infection. So thanks for your attention. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, Marianne. That was a very elegant study. Um, some couple of questions. Thank you. Uh, my name is Ursula from Germany. Thank you for the interesting uh, um, presentation. My question was, um, you have two regions with problems in France. How is the situation in the cattle there with BVD? Uh, I don't know where, how many... BBD you do have in cattle in France, but is this region also a problem with BBD in cattle, or do you see some mixtures on mm. we see in Bavaria and uh, Austria on the Alps that it jumps from sheep to cattle and cattle to sheep? Thank you. So yeah, in, indeed, BBD can come to um, to a sheep, but yeah, it's true. The, the region affected with BVD are not quite the same that the region we have problem with BDV in France. The, the region we have problem with uh, BDV are mainly a region with a high concentration of sheep, because I don't know if you know, in Aveyron we, we make a, a, a goat, um, a cheese, sorry, called um, Roquefort. So it's a very concentrated area. But yeah, no, the BVD problem are, uh, is larger, actually. It, it's bigger. It's not um, on, this, on this area. So, yeah. One quick question, OK, Marissa. Um, Marissa Sheehan from Ireland. Um, the animals with BVD4 and 6 that were malformed, did they go full term? And what were the malformations, please? So yeah, uh, they were euthanized, euthanized sorry, be, uh, one month before their term. So it, it's what you wanted to know if they were to at the end of the pregnancy, right? And, and what were the malformations seen? Sorry, what, which malformation? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, we mainly saw um, the, the, the mainly observed um, malformation was concerned the brain actually. We had hydrocephaly. And after that, we had um, arthrogryposis. Um, yeah. Sorry. No, it's great. Thank you very much once again for a very elegant presentation. Um, thank you very much.